two or three times. Oh, back to San Diego Union Tribune. San Diego Union Tribune. Order. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, well, not only as a, as a reporter, but. Uh, as a reporter. In a crisis, uh, the whole organization is in a crisis. And I just interviewed today uh, a paper. Writing a paper. How to save the newspaper? From demise. From demise. They already sold all their newspapers in Illinois. So the newspapers, and they're selling off a lot of important things in order to hold on to this newspaper. So uh, maybe you have some ideas. Give me a call. Uh, Six three one. Carol, you called before. I'm driving in the car and I said, this is the channel. So that's all. This is the intern from Barry in Connecticut. I got the note from the cable visit that the program is going to be on starting April 1st. It's on Friday. The staff is going to be over. So I just thought I'd let you know. Okay, thanks. Bye. Hello? 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 A rare and beautiful person. I thank you. That's for Cablevision, Connecticut, Fairfield County. 10.30 p.m. Fridays. Thank you. Hi, Comcast Cable. Melissa Leonard, Comcast TV, and Seymour and Sonia. Uh, Derby. She has 27... VHS and two DVDs ready to go out. They've been cable cast. She's given it a very good time. Those are on Wednesday and Thursday at 10 o'clock. Wednesday and Thursday at 10.30 p.m. The half hour is on Wednesday at 10.30 and the two hours on Thursday at 10.30 p.m. Oh, the extension that you called is not my extension. That might be part of the reason I never went down. Thank you, Melissa Leonard, Comcast Seymour, Connecticut. Thank you, Mr. James Correa, and wife. He <laughs> he makes quite a joke of it. He says, "I'm a TV producer," and he says, "And I got a paper to prove it." He's, he's good. He's a good joke. Uh, Dick Wolfley. I got the tape uh, last Friday, and uh, I got the content yesterday. I have all the shows recorded onto my computer, and in the process, about a third way done of uploading this would be the February shows to YouTube. February events, uh, March YouTube. Yes, sir. Dick Wolfley, my Good server evening. for the YouTube. Hi, this is Monica at Metro East Community Media. I'm a choice of Pandora. I have a box of uh, VHS tapes here that evidently you wanted, and I was just calling you to let you know what the price was for me on like those bags. It was $7.23. So you can just put that just a second to look through That's Metro East, Portland, Oregon. Cable TV, public access. Very, very nice people. Now. Hi, Yeah. Uh, that was an obscene call, and that young man could go to jail instantly for that. Hi, Glenn Gordon. I don't have any time to respond to you, Hi there, everybody. Did you hear about the fellow who bought a used car? And he says, I'm not sure exactly how old it is, but the odometer is in Roman numerals. To save this message. Hi, Lindor. This is Andrew Gabriel's calling from Time Warner Cable Public Access. Uh, as you know, Shaquan is no longer with us. Um, I will be taking over her position. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, you can give me a call back, uh, 242-8800, extension 3485. Um, I did 
put your tapes, uh, they're all in boxes and ready to be sent out. I'm going to bring them down today, so they should be mailed out tomorrow, and you will receive them. Uh, if you have any more questions, you can give me a call back. Once again, 242-8800, extension 3485. Thank you. Have a great day. I uh, want to make a record here of this poison that is being put into the sky deliberately. We want to know who's paying for it. We want to know who's doing it. We want to know why they're doing it. But this is why so many people, in fact, practically everybody is sick. It's from these particulates that come from these poison streaks deliberately put in the sky. Let me review for you. We had rain. We had rain all day yesterday, Wednesday, and then it rained all night long. And then it rained uh, all day Tuesday, and it rained Tuesday night, and so forth. We had nothing but rain for three or four days. Uh, it was 40 degrees. We were blessed that the temperature didn't drop, but it was water on top of ice. Okay, so we get a chance today for a nice blue sky, and at 6.30 this morning, the sun was rising. But already, these dirty uh, jet planes and these dirty people had ruined the horizon. The horizon was all this dirt and poison. And you see, now that streak is going to spread out, spread out, spread out, the dirty guys will be back again and putting more streaks in the skies. There's one there that's very faint and trying to ruin our blue sky. They will try and try and try and try. This is the first day that it's really more like spring than it is winter. I wanted to tell you about the sunrise. The sunrise is about 6.32 a.m. It gets dark about 6.10 p.m. You see how close we're coming to the vernal equinox when we have equal night with equal daylight. So we get a chance for a nice blue sky and these crooks are out ruining it. Who is doing this? Why are they doing it? And who is paying for it? This costs a lot of money, this gasoline for jets. And it costs a lot of money to exude this poison from the jets. And don't tell me it isn't happening. You see that blue one right there? Oh, yeah, there's the cross. There's a double cross. See it? And it's sunshine. At sunset, they play tic-tac-toe. Okay, there's three of them. They've been out here, as I say, since 6.30 this morning, and it's 9.30 now. Three hours they've been trying to ruin the sky. Well, their work so far is to no avail. And I need your help. It This takes four hands. I brought in the blue sky preserver yesterday and I took it all apart and I dismantled it and turned it upside down and then I put the heater on it and got all the moisture and water out of it because we've had quite severe weather in March and February. And now I want to put it in a bag, in a black bag to protect it and put it outdoors again and uh, reinsert the copper piping in the uh, each one of these goes on one of those like that and then let me get the five pipes in this is the coupler that holds the five pipes together at the top Date, March the 6th, 2008, Anno Domini. So far, the blue sky is winning, and this will help it to win the rest of the day. I kept telling the cars that their day would come. They were beaten by rain and snow and ice. But I kept telling them, your day will come. 
and it might be today. You're very pretty. You're very pretty again. I'm glad you got over your malaise. Over here. Let us see those green eyes. Thanks. Hello, Sebastian. Now, why do you sit on my book? Why do you want me to do something for you? You've been fed four times. Now, why did you do that? Now, why did you do that? We have to get that mean streak out of you. Sebastian's very peaceful. Here's a video you don't want to miss. The cat to whom the happy house belongs is lying down next to the interloper. And that illustrates today's Bible passage. Luke 6:27 Love your enemies do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you they're doing better than I am what do you say, what do you say? What do you say? the meditation says Clearly, Jesus wants us to do good to people who can in no way pay us back. He's talking about a different thing. Um, selfless giving. Be a servant of the Lord and do not look for a reward. This is the other part of that passage. Uh, don't give expecting anything back and don't give just to somebody who will pay you back not for glory or for fame just give freely in his name the motive of giving reveals the character of the giver more than the gift itself Okay, this is a, a beautiful March the 7th, Friday, 2008, that's Ante Meridian, and uh, it is sunny, and the aerosol is working desperately to try to ruin the blue sky, but the blue sky preserver prevails as it did yesterday. That aerosol was here all day yesterday trying to take away the blue sky. Keep at it, honey. Keep at it. You're doing your job. Now let's go out and start the 1980 Lincoln. They're both going. Don't they sound great? Why does a 1993 have a dual exhaust? Four fifteen Hemi? Does that sound right? 
And that one's a 351 Windsor. Thank you, Dennis Kinnicutt, for teaching me to disconnect the negative terminal so that the batteries don't run down. This is more like spring than it is winter, and it's the second day of the same. Do you think this could be it? The end of winter? You're losing aerosol poisoning. You're losing. The blue sky protector is chasing you out. Daisy Mae Jean, you had such a good bath. It cost thirty-two dollars to give you a bath. Yeah. Daisy Dean, lift up your tail so I can show the people how nice, white, and clean Come everything on, is. Come on, turn yeah, there's the tail. Daisy, 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 you so white and clean. $32. Yeah, but she likes. She's worth it. I she'd rather have you do it, though. No, Daisy. She's worth it. Daisy Dean. Daisy Dean. Daisy May. Yes, blue eyes. Let's see the blue eyes. Is she cute? She's like a teddy bear. She's so soft. Went up to the village, Daisy, and you took a walk, and you didn't get dirty, and the sidewalks were clean. Did people say how beautiful you were? No, we didn't encounter anybody in our little joint. No, we didn't. That speaks well for the economy up there. Yeah, there isn't any. <laughs> now, Siberian huskies are one of... Huskies were almost extinct around 1900? yep. yep. Siberian huskies. Why was that? What happened I don't to them? Know. They just all don't know. Oh, and they're... a tribe in northern Siberia called the Chukchi um, nursed these little puppies and kept them going. And, and so they got back on track again. Yeah, yeah. The original ones were short and small, like her. And the uh, the more modern ones are. Taller. Oh, they are? Longer legs, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be awful if they went extinct with their blue eyes. What are you looking at out there? The eye doctor said to the Japanese man, mm -hmm. you have a cataract. And he says, no, I have a Lincoln Continental. Daisy has cataracts. Did you know? It's Victoria calling you. I'm sorry, it's been a while. I was trying to figure out when was a good time for you to call me to make an appointment to actually speak to you. Um, tomorrow I'm taking a friend to the physical therapist. Uh, his appointment starts at 9.30, and then I believe I'm just going to be sitting in the waiting room waiting around for him. So I was thinking that if you call me at 9.45 that that would work. Um, so call me at 9.45 and if it's not crazy, if it's not too crazy um, and, and strange for me to answer if I'm not in the middle of helping him, I will call. I'll answer the phone. Um, but 9.45, call me at 9.45 and I'll step out into the parking lot or whatever and talk to you. So okie dokie, I can't wait to hear from you and um, I that sounds great about your friend's grandson who was at RTI as well and heading on to MIT. That's great. Okay, Glendora, um, I will try to come to you soon. Uh, I don't think it's going to be in March, though, but um, I'll let you know. We'll talk tomorrow. Bye. She's so nice uh, to and help her friend to go... Uh, Take him to physical therapy. She's so nice to do that. That's Victoria Caresi, uh, formerly director of programming Manhattan 
uh, public access. Lou Conway sent me some audio cassettes of the 1950s, and this is interesting to me. Listen. Hey, Glenn Doyle, Lou Conway here. How are you? I got your message. And, um, now, those, those tapes are for your listening pleasure. They belong to my, my father, and um, I thought you might like them. So, enjoy, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. It's pretty interesting to me. It belonged to his father. Hi, this message is for Glenn Doyle. I'm returning your call from regarding a message that you left me. I was a little confused as to what it was regarding, but it occurred to me what had happened. Um, I apologize if uh, one of my friends made a nasty comment or so. Um, I found out later what happened. Somebody took my phone and played a joke because uh, we saw your show on Queen's Public Access, and um, I guess someone just said some silly things they told me they did by accident, and I didn't want any bad blood or any trouble. So, please, uh, forgive, you know, accept the apology, and I'm sorry if we bothered you. Good luck with everything, and, uh, that's it. Okay, bye-bye. Sorry again. Okay, the apology is accepted. Uh, it was obscene, and I'm going to tell all of you people, I wouldn't fool around with that. You could end up in jail with a big fine very, very quickly. And so this uh, young man was astute enough to apologize. And the apology is accepted. That's Karen Hecht, who was calling. Jerry, I just wanted to let you know, I just got out of the hospital today, uh, quarter after four, quarter after twelve, and I did miss your program last night, but I'll make sure I catch it tonight. Thank you so much. She doesn't feel well. Pulses of strength and recovery to Mary. Hi, Glenn Dora. It's Barbara Goldberg. I'm calling to give you a report about Esther. So I'd love for you to call me back. Uh, we were in court with her this morning. And She's if so you don't nice. Know already, the uh, guardian stepped down, and <laughs> the sister are now her guardian. And the judge was very nice. She said this is now going to be a family matter. Uh, of course, the guardian tried to uh, make a claim that the money that she gave away to her family should be returned, and the judge denied that. So, call me when you can. I'm sorry I'm calling so late, but I went to the city from the courthouse, so I got home just a little while ago. Uh, 822 and rate up with all the correct information. Bye-bye. Folks, I'm going to play that to you again. This is a it's huge victory, and it was television that did it. Days. Listen to this again. Please. Hi, Glenn Dora. It's Barbara Goldberg. I'm calling to give you a report about Esther. So I'd love for you to call me back. Uh, we were in court with her this morning. It's and so nice of her. don't know already, the uh, Guardian... Stepped down and Sam Rouseman and his sister are now her guardian. And Joseph's son was very nice. She said this is now going to be a family matter. Uh, of course, the guardian tried to uh, make the claim that the money that she gave away to her family should be returned to her grandchildren. And the judge denied that. Hooray, so, hooray, hooray, Rouseman, you lost. I'm sorry I'm calling so late, but I went to the city from the courthouse, so I got home just a little while ago. Uh, 822-2582. Uh, 
Hi, Glenn Dora. This is Barbara Goldberg. I'm calling. This is about you Esther Barron. About Esther. So I do Esther Barron. Call me back. Uh, we were in court with her this morning. And Thank you for doing that. Ready? The uh, guardian stepped down. Hooray. Sam Rossman lost. Are now her guardian. You lost, and Sam. the judge was very nice. She said this is now going to be a family matter. Uh, of course, the guardian tried to uh, make the claim that the money that she gave away to her family should be returned, and the judge denied that. So, call me. Hooray, hooray, time. hooray. I am going so late that I went to the city from the courthouse, so I got home just a little while ago. Uh, 822-258-2. I'll give you a permission. And he did watch your program, and it was excellent, and straight up with all the correct information. Bye-bye. Uh, the show, of course, uh, she mentions was this about Esther Varon. It was about Esther Varon and the victory of the television, Channel 5, uh, Mary Garofolo, exposing the ring, the viciousness, the dehumanized uh, greed of the courts, the judges, and the guardians like Sam Rouseman. The judge was O'Connell. This new judge, I believe, is Ippolito. So now after Channel 5 exposed this, and I'm, I would speculate, wouldn't you folks, that the chief judge of the state of New York, uh, Judith Kay, uh, get on the... Uh, got on this uh, and I hope that from now on this greed and uh, skinning uh, elderly elderly people's bank accounts and property and real estate uh, that it will stop and Barbara says the judge was very nice don't you be sucked in by that uh, because the judges are mere puppets out in the front line doing only what the ring tells them to do, the vicious ring down in the basement pushing all the buttons. So don't you think that the judge is very nice? The judge is not nice at all. The judge is just front. And the judge does what they tell him to do, or the judge is out. Just to let you know, I got the card in the mail. This is Susan Kitty Cat. Hi, Pandora. It's Susan. Um, I just want to let you know I got the card in the mail that the program, A Chat with Pandora, is scheduled to air. Um, on the Peak Still system from April 1st to September 30th on Saturdays at 9 p.m. All right, just want to let you know. Good news. See you later. Bye. Thank you, Susan Kitty Cat, and thank you for rescuing hundreds of cats a week. This message will be automatically deleted in 14 days. Time from cross. Here's a, <coughs> here's a double cross. Uh, I don't have any time from Cox Cable. Um, I, I can't pursue this anymore. I don't have any time. Cop out, double um, cross. And I can't seem to get anyone uh, that does have time. Dirty uh, work of Lori Batty. Uh, Manchester, Connecticut, Cox Cable. The library and I hear some personal problems and some illness in the family. So I feel uh, sorry I'm for it. sorry, but I can't go through it. Take care. Um, Terrible double cross. Keep your word. If you give your word, that. you keep I'm it. Sorry. What's sorry. wrong with people today? And then they wonder why they have problems. They break basic the morality, and then they wonder deleted. why they have problems. Eleven days. The message has been deleted. Saved message two. James Dixon, he's watching a chat with Glendora in Manhattan, and he calls me up on the phone and tells me what he sees and hears. Uh, Thank you, James Dixon. The message has been to... Hello, 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 Glenn Doris, uh, Gregory. My dear pal, uh, Gregory well, Washburn. It's Thursday afternoon, uh, just past 2 o'clock, and uh, I'm on my lunch hour from work. If you want to call me in the next hour, I can I can get your call. Okay? I can see you're trying to call me, but I, I, I don't have any of the voicemail on my, my phone. Okay. So he's coming up uh, Monday, the folks. Isn't that nice? Change your pin. Press. Please enter your new pin now. Folks, did you hear about the sign in the restaurant window? 
Don't make fun of our coffee. Someday you'll be old and weak, too.